Thank you. My name is Alam Yusuf in the capacity of Director of Primary Healthcare. Jack of all trade, master of none. You just heard of master of one there. <laughs> <laughs> Can you just each take like a step sure. forward? That's perfect. Better? Thanks. Um, Any questions? Did you want to answer Katie's question? Uh, sure. So just um, wondering, you know, for our border communities like Albury, Wodonga, how is the coordination going to work um, on the New South Wales side and the Victorian side? And is it possible that we'll see some people on one side of the border vaccinated before the other? Not really. No, we won't see that because uh, COVID-19 vaccine control is totally taken over under the federal government. The Commonwealth is rolling out, rolling it out, and Commonwealth has clearly indicated that it is their responsibility how they rolled out. So there won't be an issue with state border related stuff because everybody will get the same vaccine, same mechanism, same timing. There'll be slight differences in because of ruralities and how it is, but look, in general, I would say the most vulnerable, 70 plus year old, Aged care residents would be having it for the first go, I would say. How long do you think it'll take to vaccinate everyone in the NLHD? Ah, uh, that's a very good question. Nobody knows an answer. Look, I think what we are trying to do is not vaccinate everyone. Um, if you look at the Australian vaccination guidelines they've put up across, what we are doing is watchful state at this point in time to see how US and UK and there are a few other smaller countries going around with vaccination, like Abu Dhabi, uh, Singapore started this week. A few other countries, so we're looking at how things are rolling out, what are the things popping up, how safe it is, and what people are you know, bringing it up as you know, feedback, responses, and complaints, and things like that. Because we are in a very more fortunate state in Australia, given that we don't have any COVID-19 you know, raging through our community. So we, don't, we are not in a hurry to vaccinate right now. That's the current context, what the federal government is looking at. So once we work out when it is going to be rolled out, looks like around February, March, which is the planned idea and we will have limited access for vaccine we won't have all the vaccines in the world for us at that point in time so we will target it for the most vulnerable in the sense most likely it is going to be going for 70 plus year olds initial stage would be a, a nursing home residence and did you say the approach won't be to vaccinate everyone Look, at this point in time, uh, by end of next year, the approach won't be to vaccinate everyone. Look, uh, even even in, in US and UK, we have no plans of vaccinating 18 year old and less for till about 22, 2022, 2023. So uh, we have to look at what data comes up and how safe it is, because safety is a risk and we are not going to take it lightly. Hence, we are going to assess very critically of what is happening around us in the globe and get the best out of it for our people here. What's the plan in the MLHD? Who will be administering the vaccines? Will it be done at hospitals, by GPs? Yep, uh, very good question. Uh, um, very, um, not very clear area as such, but what is very clear is that for the first three to six months of the vaccine rollout, there should be medical oversight. It's just not somebody who can vaccinate can go in and vaccinate. So general practice or GPs are going to be in the forefront of vaccinating. And so for that to happen, I would say general practice is going to have a significant role and a lead role in this vaccine rollout in MLHD as well as all over the country. You mentioned before percentages. What kind of numbers do you need to vaccinate to get that herd immunity uh, you know, going? Um, look, um, from what we are seeing, some vaccines are really, really effective in the sense 94, 95% of the time. So uh, from modeling data that we've looked at in other countries and here, we think at least 70 plus, 70% 70 plus people vaccinating against the, the, the um, COVID-19 is very important for that to have the level of uh, immunity developed so that they don't get bad disease. So um, a more important thing to recognize is vaccination is not the uh, ultimate bullet here, nor that is going to solve all our problems. 
uh, human behavior and human uh, nature of how we deal with this pandemic is going to be the mainstay, regardless we have a vaccine or not, to be honest. Uh, as much as we like to think that this is all over, and it is far from all over, because most vaccines will, pr uh, all the vaccines that we have now in the world, or which we are going to get over the market for the coming few months and uh, next part of the year, is going to prevent severe disease from COVID-19. We haven't got a guarantee that the vaccines are going to prevent you getting infected. Say, if you get the vaccine, uh, COVID-19 vaccine, there's no guarantee that you will not transmit the virus to another person. But there's a guarantee that 95% of the time, it is sure that you won't get bad disease, you won't get hospitalized, you're not going to likely die of COVID-19. So that's the important part of it. So if you if you look at if you look at um, how we're going to roll out, that's the reason why uh, why we are targeting the aged care residents and 70 plus because they're the most vulnerable people. Uh, if we are to looking at a measles-like vaccine, if, it, if, it, if the vaccine was like a measles vaccine where you get you get the vaccine and you get prevented from getting infected. If that's the case, we will vaccinate the young people because they are the people who are out and about and carrying and you know propagating the virus. So we our target will differ by what information we get. Not to say that uh, the vaccines that we have in the market in the world aren't going to stop infection transmission. It has the capacity. We haven't tested it yet. No, we have evidence for it, so it is going to come very soon. So what's the NLHD doing right now to prepare? Are there, you know, buying more cold storages? Are there any work around that? Is it talking to GPs to let them know what the plan might be? What's happening right now and what will right happen now, over uh, Right now, what is happening is we are talking to you <laughs> and we are extending, uh, uh, we are extending um, um, open arms for keep talking this because improving awareness, improving the confidence, and improving the knowledge about safety profile of the vaccine is critical when the vaccine comes up. And 2021, I can tell you for sure, at the end of the year we're talking here now, 2021 is going to be dominated by COVID-19 vaccine in media, as much as it was dominated by the numbers of infections and deaths in media this year. Next year is all about vaccines and we will have first generation vaccines that we are using now we'll have second generation vaccines which might come mid next year thereafter so uh, our main game as mlhd is because we have about 110 or so gps who work with mlhd and who are doing general practice as well as hospital work with us we will prepare them for where it is and we are working in very close relationship with the phn to deal with whatever need to support the general practice mechanism from there. And MLHD has its own uh, state run or MPSs, uh, MPS aged care homes. So we will be very proactive to get our residents um, vaccinated and protected. And when it comes to a stage that healthcare workers get vaccination, we will be on the forefront to have our health, uh, healthcare workers get vaccinated. So in in form of rolling out, uh, setting up centers, storage facilities, the responsibility has been taken up by the federal government, the Commonwealth, and they will let us know if we need to step into that area. Is it a bit of a wait and see for a little bit? I reckon there is a higher level plan every in the federal government state, I mean federal government level. Um, at this point in time for MLHD, we are priming the field and talking to people, getting ready for it. So when it's out and about, we'll be very proactive and out to it straight away. Are you confident that uh, you need the 70% of people to get vaccinated and you need people to behave well? Are you confident, given what you've seen, that uh, we can achieve that? I, I think given that at this point in time, vaccines are not supposed to uh, prevent infection transmission, I'm still thinking that it is very important that we stick to hand washing properly, uh, social distancing if that is required, avoiding crowded places, and very, very important thing, 
is if you have any respiratory symptoms, we need to get tested. I think about one third of people who have respiratory symptoms are getting tested at this point in time in New South Wales, two thirds are not, not getting tested. That is a big risk in a situation of pandemic. Um, pandemic, outcome of pandemic or the impact of the pandemic, as much as we like to think, depends on how bad is the bug or how good is the vaccine. In fact, it depends on human behavior. People propagate it, people's behavior and concepts and attitudes, norms, values, decides how big and what the pandemic is going to be. Do you feel like you're getting enough information as an NLH, as a local health district from the federal government to plan for the local rollout? Yes, very much so. Uh, we are very connected with the federal government in the sense uh, Commonwealth is in very closely working with all the state health departments and state health departments have uh, pandemic planning meetings every week and executives are being uh, briefed and we are on the forefront of what is happening. The federal government has indicated that the vaccine will be free for everyone. Mm -hmm. Do you know if they're planning to set up a Medicare rebate for GPs or something like that? How is it going to be funded? At the moment, a vaccine has no cost that we know of, and vaccines aren't going to be available in the pharmacy for people to purchase. As of I know now, I think till about mid next year, that's what it is going to be. And if you are going to get your vaccine via a vaccination clinic, which is most likely going to be a GP led thing, uh, which is going to be GPs by themselves in their rooms at their respiratory clinics and special set up fly in, fly out, fly out clinics. And in that situation, if the general practice needs to be remunerated for what they're doing, we will look at how the Medicare billing can be used for that, you know, in the same way of what a normal consult would happen. Very similar to what a flu vaccine uh, rollout would do. You know, when you have a flu vaccination rollout during flu season, we don't have a separate Medicare billing item or, you know, things like that, but we have a, a very good mechanism to vaccinate our population. Yeah. Any other questions? Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you.